Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. This is part one of a new build series. We're going to construct a Great Lakes supply steamer and it's going to be built almost completely out of fiberglass. You can see the major components are in place, but the build has only really just begun. So let's do a little bit of background on how this particular style of steamship fit into Great Lakes history. It's about 150 years ago, there were very few roads and the railways were only just starting to, to reach small areas in the southern part of Ontario. But up here, they had to hack through rocks and hills and it took a lot longer to get railway lines into these more isolated areas. So the only practical way to ship goods and people was on the water. There was a tourist trade, people coming from the larger cities and going up and staying in resorts. More and more of the lake traffic involved carrying people as well as goods. So these steamboats were active all over the Great Lakes for many years. Here's an old photo of four Great Lakes steamers. They appear to be all supply steamers. They're all a little bit different, but this one here on the, on the front left seems to have more accommodation for passengers, whereas this one on the front right seems more of a straightforward supply boat. They would be taking in supplies through these opening doors along the main deck level. So they would all have that in common. There's also a fairly uh, prominent railing on the top of the upper deck on all of these examples. There's a large steam smokestack. My project is going to be to approximate the general look of the supply steamer and take some features from one and some from the other. The steamship will use the same hull as I've used on the tugboat and the Great Lakes lumber hooker from the same era shares a lot of the hull characteristics. Now I'd like to explain how I made these fiberglass parts. Thanks for watching. I did a previous video called Make a Fiberglass Model RC Boat Hull. It came in part one and part two. Now in part one, I described how I made the initial plug and then took a mold off it and made the Haven 34 hull in two parts. This hull incorporates a flange inside and the idea was to then make it easy to set a deck on top of the flange. So on this project, I'm using the standard hull with flange. So let me show you how I made this deck. So here's the plug, here's the mold, and here's a deck. The deck plug was made of a number of layers of basswood glued together, sanded down, and then covered with layers of resin, uh, repaired and smoothed off with uh, epoxy, and I have gel coat on here as well, but I've sanded through in many places. After the plug was all smooth and covered with uh, wax, I put on two layers of gel coat. And then I laid up a number of layers of one ounce and two ounce mat and resin. And I built up a mold on top of this plug. I've reinforced it with long strand fiberglass, body filler, and I've put supports on it so that it doesn't lose its shape this way. The deck mold has an outer flange and inner flanges here around the hatch openings. These flanges form a surface that I can put masking tape on to create a boundary for my layup part. After my mold has been all waxed up, I put tape along here and that forms a boundary for my first layer of gel coat. And down in here, you can see, I've got another little boundary here so that I can gel coat in here and there's no spill over the sides of the uh, mold. 
this makes it a lot easier to do my layup because there's no cleanup afterwards and I get a more accurate part. So right here in the same area, I have my border here from this area and a border here. And here's the fiberglass deck on the steamship build. Let's take a look at these fiberglass hatches. The hatches fit over the deck openings and are a slightly loose fit. So here's the hatch plug, the hatch mold, and two hatches. In order to make the hatch plug, I first fabricated a deck out of fiberglass using my deck mold. Then I filled in the area around the opening with basswood. On the top, I expanded the combing on the original hatch opening about one eighth of an inch. And that would account for the thickness of the layup of the hatch, plus give me a little bit of space. After the wood structure was in place, I used fiberglass resin, I used gel coat, and I used um, uh, epoxy filler and got everything nice and smooth. Then I waxed it all up and took a mold off this using the same method. I built up a mold that fits over both hatches. I made supports here and here. It's quite strong. And I always store the mold inside the plug just to prevent any kind of distortion and so on if it sits on the shelf for a few months. The hatch mold has a nice flange around it. I apply tape to that flange. It projects into the cavity about a quarter of an inch and it forms a nice boundary for the initial gel coat and the resin when I lay up. You can see here how neatly that formed the corner of this hatch. The next fiberglass part is the main superstructure, which is attached with screws onto the hatch. So here's the superstructure plug, the two part superstructure mold, and a superstructure. <laughs> the base for this plug was made from one of the hatches that I made from my hatch mold. The basswood is covered with resin, it's covered with a little bit of uh, gel coat filler and so on, prepped up nice and smooth, and the hatch formed a flange here, and I, I made a flange to fit on the top here. There is a slight angle on this flange so that it can be, be removed from the two-part mold. Using the plug, I laid up a two-part mold. In the center, I think I used a little bit of plastic, maybe some saran wrap, and uh, divided the two halves here along the center line. It fits together like this, and then I have two one quarter 20 bolts that go through with nuts to hold it in place. The two sides are fabricated separately using the same tape method that's stuck to a flange all the way around the perimeter of the mold. After the two sides are laid up, the mold is put back together, bolted tightly, and then I can run some epoxy down the two seams, and that will attach the whole thing together. After I've joined them together with epoxy, I can put in a couple of mounting pieces here that I can use for screws. I just fix these on with CA glue. I believe on this part, I have two layers of gel coat and two layers of one ounce mat. Quite strong. The next main fiberglass structure is the cabin roof, and it is screwed onto the main superstructure. So here's a roof plug, the roof mold, and a roof. The roof plug was made from one of my large hatches here. The hatch was modified a little bit. It was lengthened so that I could have more overhang on the roof. I trimmed off the original border on the hatch and brought it down to around 7 sixteenths of an inch. Then I cleaned everything up and uh, did the same old routine, adding filler and so on, making it nice and smooth. 
and waxing it up. I used a piece of uh, handy board here as my base and that would form the lip. The mold is laid up in the same way, right on top of the plug. I apply tape all the way around the perimeter, extending over about a quarter of an inch. And here's a standard roof. And it has two layers of uh, gel coat plus two layers of one ounce mat. The next fiberglass part is the pilot house and it is screwed onto the roof. And here's the pilot house plug, the toothpiece molds, and a fiberglass pilot house. They fit together with one quarter 20 bolts and nuts. I use a tape border here as a boundary for my gel coat and resin. And it's very light and strong. And up on top of the pilot house, we have the pilot house roof. The roof is screwed onto the top of the pilot house. And here's the pilot house roof plug. Once again, I have a flange here. It's just a simple one part mold. The tape is applied. And here's the pilot house roof. I also have a mold for the fiberglass dinghy. The scale of these models is about one half inch to the foot. So this would be about 14 feet long. I may or may not add one of these up here on the roof in this project. I'm not sure yet. I have to see how it appears overall after the works progressed. I used an original basswood dinghy and made the mold off that dinghy but then there was no damage done at all to the, uh, to the little boat, so I reused it. <laughs> the layup is the same on this little dinghy as on the other molds. And I use tape here on this flange and then butt my gel coat and my resin and mat up against the tape. And I come out with a nice smooth border. Now, of course, the dinghy has to have uh, a gunnel added to it and a little piece up on the bow. It needs, uh, it needs a skeg. You know, it needs a bit of work, but it's a lot easier starting off with uh, a part that's already molded and strong, and you can just put basswood on here and clamp it and so on. So it's a lot quicker. So now let's take a look at this steamer in its present state. I plan to have this whole upper section removable. It will lift off like this and then provide plenty of access through the original hatch openings so that I can maintain the gear down below. Now I have weighed this and it comes in at about two pounds. And I want to be conscious about how much weight I put aloft on this model. But I'm not overly worried about this weight because it takes about 17 pounds of weight with this hull to bring the water line up to this point. So we've got plenty of stability and ability to balance the boat later. Now on this roof, you can see that I've used the standard piece for the front section. But what I've done is I've turned it around and used the same piece cut and CA glued and epoxied to extend this roof aft to this point here. And I got a fair curve here because I set pieces of wood right along the top of the shear line on the hull and then glued it after I had conformed to this shape. So I know that that's uh, fairly accurate. And I have a little stick here holding up the uh, after end and it just keeps it exactly where I want it. Now the base for this superstructure is formed by two hatches. I placed the, the two hatches over the deck, got everything lined up to the right curve and so on, and then I just filled in the gap here with wood and then CA'd it and epoxied it together. And as you can see, I've cut out the center here of the main hatch 
so I have access to this area here and these four screws hold on the superstructure and then at the top I've got the screws going down through the top and here everything is uh, removable so I'll be able to put wiring in later if I want to and reach in here for all the other little things that make modeling so interesting <laughs> Now, the original fiberglass deck was designed to fit on top of the flange in here, and there was a nice gap all the way along the side of it so that there was no problem fitting it in and so on. But in this steamer build, the deck extends out right to the very edge of the uh, railing. So I had to modify the fiberglass deck for this project. So I used heavy craft paper from the dollar store and traced out the perimeter outline of the uh, hull up here at deck level. And then I evenly divided up this pattern for the railing stanchions that will come up from the first deck to the second deck and then go right through and form the railing. So then using the pattern, I glued on 1 16th inch thick basswood all the way around the fiberglass deck perimeter and then backed it up with another piece on top so that I have one eighth of an inch thickness in my deck here. And, and I also traced out the cutout notches for the stanchions. And I'm using one and a half inch spacers so I can get the right height for the first deck here and the shipping doors. I want the sides of this shipping door level here to be slightly curved inwards with a little bit of tumble home. So I'm going to be using one quarter inch square dowels and I'll pass them through these cutouts and make sure I have everything lined up and even. And then after everything is in place and the deck is in the proper location, I'll cut them off later at the railing height up top and then everything should be in proper alignment. In my video series, RC Gaff Pilot Cutter Build, I go into a lot of detail on the work here on the railing and on the gunnel. And that's best done before the deck is on. So I plan to do as much work below decks, meaning the, uh, the servo, the rudder, the motor, shafting and so on. After that, I'll be fixing on the deck. So that brings us to the end of part one of the supply steamer build. I hope that there was some information here about fiberglassing and uh, mold making and so on that will help uh, the hobby along a little bit. It's an interesting uh, field and it is almost a hobby in itself. Over the next two weeks, I'll be working down below doing things that I have shown before in previous videos. In the next video in this series, I'll be sure that I've recorded things that could help other people along in a similar project. Thanks for watching.